So we're going to go to a couple thrift stores that I go to. Uh, the first one is uh, St. Vincent de Paul. They have, usually have a thrift store in every big city. Uh, and it's the biggest one I go to. It's usually the best bet. For the last 10 years, I've been working on a series of paintings that are found thrift store landscape reproductions with added words on them. And I paint the words into the found landscapes. The words are usually big monumental block letters, although from time to time I distort and create all kinds of different forms from the letters. Some are very hard to read. Some almost look like abstract sculptures. But it's always um, text. They, they always have a message of mine, and I'm not quite sure what that message is, although I basically just like to say I go for the laughs. This one's going to be called, uh, just put the awards on the kitchen table. I'm back here painting a masterpiece. <laughs> Oh, I cracked myself up. Hmm. Unfortunately, all these are like originals. I don't I only, only paint on reproductions. These are like cheap oil originals. Mm, those aren't right. Like the originals, I always say, have too much human smell on them, you know? It's like... It, and it would be a comment on the artist to paint on the original. These are just like a, like a um, commodity. You know, they're not attributed to any one person in any kind of way. They're just this product, you know, empty. I always say that they had all the pretty sucked out of them. They've been looked at too long. Well, we've struck out at St. Vincent. By the 70s, we didn't call them hippies anymore. We called them freaks. So I decided to become a freak about eighth grade or so and start growing my hair and wearing bell bottoms. And uh, How'd that go down in rural Tennessee? Not good. They didn't go over it very good at all. I mean, there was a small, and which delighted me. You know, it had the, it had the uh, desired effect of, of shocking and, uh, and upsetting people, which is what we really wanted to do. It's a difficult thing to um, be an artist in the South. It is. Uh, I had to leave the South to be an artist, and uh, that was the main conflict, you know, with me and the uh, culture was that it couldn't, uh, I couldn't be what I wanted to be down there. That's simply put. And uh, but I am a Southerner, you know, and I'm bonded to the place. That's who I am. So, you know, it's the classic expatriate thing. My life has always been out of sync with everybody else's, like that. It's like. I've always felt that way, you know, it's like when things, that's a perfect example, you know, everybody else is like scrambling and losing jobs, but I'm, but I'm like selling art, you know, it's like who would have thought, who would have thought that uh, I'd do what I do anyway, coming from where I am, you know. So I've never, uh, I've never worried about trends and stuff, I've always just kind of lived in my own head, I guess. people react to your work? Uh, I think um, they're either, uh, they either love it or they're completely indifferent, you know? People f find the humor in my work and enjoy it because there's not a lot of humor in the art world and uh, I think it comes as just a welcome relief to a lot of people to be able to, to um, just have a laugh. What do, they, uh, what do they make of you back in Hickson? Well, I would like to think that they're shocked and outraged, but nobody cares. <laughs> That's another lesson of growing old, and you've, it's like, I'll show them, and then you go back and there's no them. It's, you know, it's just an illusion in your mind just to kind of keep you rolling. Now, we strike out here. It's just not the cards. This place is always good.
Bingo. Ten bucks. <laughs> it looks like an Italian scene or something. It's a reproduction. Good. It's got a nice big grandiose frame. It's in pretty good shape. And it's ten bucks. Can't beat it. Have a price like that. Uh, yes. Yes. It's on its way up in the world. I'm Wayne White and uh, I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I just write down whatever. I don't judge it at all. I just kind of, it's a stream of consciousness kind of thing. We work hard on our pictures so people with good paying jobs will buy them from us. <laughs> uh, killing time. The decorative texture of nonsense turned into a rich and rewarding visual experience. Damaged people needed for art positions. And that's why he has museum shows and you draw storyboards for cable television. Angry men in expensive cars. Pretty soon, they'll start wandering over here in little groups, and then our cover will be blown. And some of them are just dumb. Like all those years you were in aromatherapy, I was smelling reality. <laughs> <laughs>